the Kingsley, we've been to a lot of places looking for a good shooting area, but this is probably the most stupendous of all. We've got mountains, snow, greenery, rock, man-made wood, timbering events, and a lake below us, and paved roads. Oh, and there's a tall, geeky guy in a yellow uh, shirt. I shall join thee, sir. How you doing? How you doing? It is a nice day out. Well, lunch bread is right again. I'm going to embellish by saying today is April 22nd, 2018. Uh, tomorrow, 1 in the afternoon, and we are in the Cascade Mountains of Washington State. Certainly not with the fun, fun, fun Irish guys I grew up with, uh, many of whom I, uh, I will die friends with and communicating with almost daily. Um, I had uh, an interesting growing up period, and it was in many respects normal. We chased girls and we did sports, and we grew up. But, but underneath all this was the battle with the Catholic Church, an ideology I think um, sucks completely and it's the case where um, if a million people thinks two and two is three they're wrong and I that's the way I look at it uh, they're, they're just dead wrong and that's I'm documenting this I'm showing how I at first had doubts and then bigger doubts and finally I just read science and the whole thing went down the toilet as, as far as being believable all right that's the ideological part but all the rest is jokes sex girls sports the normal stuff for growing up and where will you be able to find your book once it's finally done oh i don't know i don't know if it'll even be published but it's at the rate i'm writing it, it's going to be about maybe 280 pages it's going to cover No 
title, but it'll be uh, coming out. It's not just coming out, coming of age. It's, it's also underneath it is the battle with the Catholic Church, uh, which I think is a benighted FUBAR institution. And I think uh, along with a few others on Earth, uh, That's the one I was, I don't uh, just object to it, I object to all religion. Religion is a foul thing, it causes people to think it's morally right to drive airplanes into buildings, or morally right to slit other people's throats in videos, or to bomb places and kill innocent children. That's what religion does. It motivates people to do that. And if you don't think so, just look at history and look at the, look at the video. you hold that, once you hold this completely unbelievable idea in your head, well then walking on water and changing water into wine is nothing, just nothing relative to that. And uh, so I concentrated on the existence of God very early. By the time I was 10, I was convinced it was just a stupid idea. So if religion and faith are stupid ideas, yes. what would be about a free society and uh, a, pro uh, a society full of progress, very much like ours used to be before we got into the present uh, realm of uh, uh, warmongering all over the world and, and doing welfare statism. Yeah, I'm not going to even deal with a lot of this stuff in my book because the book only goes from third grade to senior year in high school and I didn't have a lot of politics uh, in those periods. Um, I just didn't. Uh, some of the inklings were there, which I will mention, but none of the hardcore the free market um, Ron Paul stuff or Murray Rothbard, none of that existed then. Although I did have an overall feeling that uh, capitalism and the market should be just nothing more than trade. You own something, I own something, we trade it to our best advantage. And the government has nothing to do with it. That was a naive idea I had that that's how it ought to be. And uh, then when I grew up, I saw that that's not the way it was, and it's not the way it is today. This thing's called taxes and money and tariffs and all this crap, and people like Donald Trump wanting to have a wall. It's so stupid. Uh, so I'm getting away from my book, but I haven't even named it yet either. I am enthusiastic about it, though. I am, I'm enjoying heck out of it. And, and so is my main squeeze, Elizabeth Kay, my... my uh, my supreme being, she is very enthusiastic too, and she's my toughest editor, uh, except my oldest brother. He's even tougher. So what happened with your eldest brother? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that he's a okay, your supreme being. All right. Well, uh, the supreme being knows me, and I was describing uh, in chapter seven uh, my first pretty sexual event in my life. And he wrote back, it's pornography, I can't edit this. <laughs> it was one paragraph. That one little paragraph. Bertrand Russell, a famous English logician and philosopher and mathematician, he was accused of being a sex-driven rule by the people of his time. 
but he pointed out that he wrote over 21 books, tens of thousands of pages, and less than 1% was about free love and how women ought to be able to be free to uh, in, uh, engage in, in uh, control of their own bodies sexually. And for that, he was accused of being a sex monger. I felt the same way. Uh, I wrote seven chapters of, of philosophy and funny episodes and, 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 and how the Irish, I like the Irish a lot. Uh, I just don't like Catholicism. I don't like the ideology. Oh, I'll tell you one funny f thing. I was in confession. <laughs> and you have to admit all your, your sins. And the priest said to me, <laughs> he said to me, are you guilty of the sin of abomination? <laughs> you might think that's funny. Well, I said, what the heck is how, that? How old were you when he asked you? About nine were... or ten. I said, I don't even know what that is. What is abomination? He said, sleeping with animals. <laughs> and I said, no, I, I live in a suburb. I don't live in a farm. <laughs> uh, but that actually, that was another thing about my book. I'm not making up all this stuff. It all happened to me, and a lot of it can be uh, counterchecked because there are many living people to say, yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. I got another one, one last one, okay? What's that? Okay, well, this is uh, another true thing. Uh, we had in our town a uh, skating rink, and it was a park, summer, summer, spring, and fall, but in the winter they would flood it, and it, it was flat, it was Illinois, and it was just, you know, that deep of ice, and it was wonderful. And then they had these uh, uh, warming house where we'd all get to go in and get warm, especially if it's 12 degrees out. And um, they had a big fire and a lot of seats. And um, they would had big loudspeakers, which they would play uh, nice waltzes and, and, and nice music. You could dance on, uh, skate and dance at the same time to the music, which I did many times. This one time, I'm about 16 years old, and I, I went in there and I talked to the attendant, and I said, Sir, um, could I please make uh, a... a uh, you call somebody sir? Oh, I did then. Yeah, I still do. It's either. You don't have to remember their name. Uh, I said, Sir, could I please make an announcement to the people? I want to talk about the passing of my grandmother. Oh, oh okay. So he turned the music off, and he gave me the mic, and I took it. I looked around. <laughs> And I said, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to thank you all uh, regarding the passing, comma, pause, of my grandmother. Uh, she was 87, and uh, the uh, church and the, uh, the, fu the funeral mass were all well attended, and everybody treated us supremely with great respect. I wanted to thank you all for this. And all the people out there that were skating, I had all turned around and were looking back toward the, I could see them through the window, and they were like this, oh. And the attendant, he was almost had tears in his eyes. And then I, I paused and I said, and fortunately, the baby lived. <laughs> <laughs> and then what did the audience do? Oh, the that? audience started coming at me. They were mad. Yeah, they were all shaking their fists. Oh, that was funny, and it really happened. I have a, a friend, I checked up on that, he said, I said, do you remember that? And he said, oh yeah, I was there, I saw you do it. And I said, well, what would you think? It was funny, it still is funny. <laughs> so that's going to be in my book. Chapter six or seven. You know, if you uh, listen to Fred, you can learn stuff. Like he actually called somebody sir, and hates religion, likes reason. And one of the many things that I've learned during the time that I've known Fred, which is basically the last decade. That's right. Is that people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones. <laughs> wait, wait, this, we gotta describe this. Isn't this beautiful? Do, what, what do we have back here? Uh, for instance, you commented on the, I don't think we can see them on, the, on, on this video, but behind us are beautiful Cascade Mountains. Up at the top are snow. Uh, areas and there's some ver horizontal line. I think those are just logging roads, and so the snow tends to be a slash, artificial. It's not natural, like that that one there where everything's brown below it. That's a logging road probably. But is this gorgeous or what? It is gorgeous. It's a beautiful day in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, I'm glad we're here. Me too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably one of the best spots we've ever been. Wouldn't you concur? 
and it smells like wood. All that, all that log wood is is Fundabar. Yeah, the uh, road is used by loggers to uh, cut down trees. And it's rough. And there's a lot of cut logs here, and log equipment, like cranes with claws that pick up logs and can move them, and uh, a tower with cables running in all sorts of directions from it. And um, you can smell the freshly cut wood. Yeah, it's great. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Live long and prosper. You got, that's, is that good for you? I mean, you got more, or is that it? I do have more, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to mention that one of the many things I've learned in the 10 years that I've known Fred is that people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones. <laughs> people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones. Ah! But, 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 but. People in Abu Dhabi do. Woohoo! Bye for now. <laughs> Okay, let me get rid of this thing. Oh.